I remember when my wife Kendra told me she was pregnant. We've been trying to have kids for a while and enough time had passed where you almost stopped thinking about it. It was really late one night and Kendra decided to take a home pregnancy test. She called me to the bathroom and just pointed at the counter where the test was just sitting there. It took a moment or two for it to register, but there it was, positive. And in the midst of all the excitement, I had this quiet thought and maybe it was even a prayer. I just said to myself, I hope it's a girl. Well, it wasn't long after that our daughter Brooklyn was born. And I remember the day after she was born. I went home to grab a few things, tidy up, and then I was gonna head back to the hospital. I stood at the top of the stairs and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm bringing my family home. I didn't know how to be a dad. I didn't have a dad for most of my life. I don't know what I'm doing. And if you're a parent, maybe you know exactly what I mean. Now, did you know that from the time a child is born until when they graduate high school, it's approximately 936 weeks. It sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Well, take a look at this. If this marble represented just one week, this is what 936 weeks looks like. But here's the thing. When a child turns nine, half of those marbles are already gone. Now, our daughter, she just turned 16, not that long ago. So this is what our jar now looks like. These are the remaining weeks that we have with Brooklyn until she graduates high school. This one looks remarkably empty. However, I wanna show you just one more. This jar, this one we've been filling for the last 16 years. Each of these marbles represents a week of her life that has gone by where we've been able to pour into Brooklyn, to teach her, to love her, and show her, disciple her, to spend time with her, to build memories with her. And not only that, our church family has been helping us fill this jar with us. Let me explain. I remember this week, Brooklyn was just over a year old. She had gotten pretty sick and it was sick enough where we had to take her to the hospital. When we got there, they were sure she had meningitis. She had a multitude of tests, including a spinal tap, and we had to spend a few days in the hospital, not to mention it was over the Christmas holiday. It was so hard to see our little girl suffering. And there was little that we could do but wait. But I also remember a church family reaching out to us. I had a conversation with a close friend that I was in community with, and he reminded me that God loves Brooklyn more than I could ever have the capacity to, and that in God's hands is the best place for Brooklyn to be. We prayed together, and it was one of the first times I ever experienced a peace that went beyond my own understanding. This is a very special week. This is the week Brooklyn got baptized. She was 12 years old, and I remember taking her out for breakfast and talking through how to write a testimony. I remember praying together as a family, and I remember all the kind words of encouragement and affirmation that came in from our church family. I also remember asking her who she wants to have baptize her. And without hesitation, she instantly answered, Caitlin. Caitlin is one of Brooklyn's mentors. She's been mentoring Brooklyn for nearly five years now, and here's someone that takes time out of her schedule to pour into our daughter, to help her through life circumstances, and to cheer her on through the normal everyday kind of stuff. Now I could go through each one of these marbles and recount so many memories and moments, some very significant like I just mentioned and others where it's just us living life together. All the vacations and road trips, the numerous heart to heart conversations that Brooklyn loves to call dad talks, the walks we took when she was really young and we would just go feed the geese or the bike rides and we'd stop to have milkshakes. The walks we take now where we just get to share life with one another, the times where we pray together and times where we go to church together, times where we laugh together until it hurts and times where we cry together just because we're hurting. When we have child dedications on weekends, it's way more than ceremony. We get to hear parents make a commitment to raise their kids to know Jesus and to take on their primary role as discipling their kids. We get to see their faces and recognize them so we can encourage them the next time we see them. And as a church family, you make a commitment to be there for them, to be that caring voice when our kid is in the hospital and to offer to pray with us, to mentor and cheer our kids on, pointing them towards Jesus, and to remind us parents to do everything we can do to disciple our kids well. 
because I know that for my family, we wouldn't be the family we are without first having Jesus at the center, and also for our church family partnering with us.